I felt like I had so much to prove to myself because I was coming from such a humongous group and a humongous movement of pop music. But for Britney Spears, she had actress Michelle Williams narrate her book. When I tell you I hollered when I heard Michelle Williams making fun of Justin Timberlake's black scent. Walking our way was a guy with a huge blinged out medallion. He was flanked by two giant security guards. Jay got all excited and said so loud, Oh yeah, faux shiz, faux shiz, genuine, what's up, homie? Justin Timberlake has finally responded after Britney Spears exposed him in her new book for acting black and being a culture vulture. However, his response did not help his case at all. Britney's long-awaited memoir, The Woman and Me, is officially out, and it's full of bombshells about Justin, who spent years painting himself as a victim and using Britney's struggles to further his own career. After exposing him for cheating and pressuring her into getting an abortion, Britney also revealed that Justin would also use a fake accent in front of black people. Now, we could maybe chalk this up to Justin being young and not knowing better if he also hasn't shown us more than once that he's willing to throw black artists under the bus to save his own back. We all know how he allowed Janet Jackson to get demonized after that Super Bowl incident, and this happened after Justin pretty much copied everything he could from Janet's brother Michael. And we also can't forget that Pharrell previously admitted almost all songs on Justin's first album were MJ Rejects. Well, Britney's back to remind us about all of this and more, and Justin's response just made him look even more guilty. Let's break it down. But I just knew it needed to have that attitude. So Justin Timberlake really said what goes around comes back around, not knowing it really would. Justin spent years taking advantage of Britney's silence while she was under conservatorship and used her name to advance his own career. But that era is finally over and Britney is now telling her side of the story. Among many bombshells that Britney revealed in her new memoir about her relationship with Justin, she also exposed him for being a culture vulture. Of course, the most glaring example of this was the 2004 Super Bowl incident, when Justin performed with Janet Jackson and ripped her dress. Now, whether this incident was staged or not is irrelevant, because the way Justin behaved after the incident showed his true character. The media was brutal to Janet, and everyone blamed her for supposedly offending the public, while Justin painted himself as the victim and complained that the incident caused him embarrassment. I mean, I was completely embarrassed. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated at the whole situation. I'm frustrated that my character is being questioned. I don't feel like I need publicity like this. Meanwhile, Janet was forced to issue a public statement of apology, and she was disinvited from the Grammy Awards. The Grammys were being held the week after the Super Bowl, and Janet was scheduled to perform a tribute to Luther Vandross. However, former Viacom CEO Les Moonves pulled her invite and he also ordered that all of Janet's singles and music videos be blacklisted from CBS, MTV, and all radio stations under Infinity Broadcasting Group. By the way, this is the same Les Moonves who was later forced to step down as chairman of CBS after multiple women exposed him for SA. However, Les had no issues with Justin performing at the Grammys after the Super Bowl incident, and Justin even won the Grammy for Best Male Pop Vocal Performance for Crimea River, a song he wrote about his breakup with Britney. But that wasn't the end of it. Janet lost many other opportunities because of the Super Bowl incident, and Justin watched all this happen and never tried to stick up for her. Janet had been cast to play singer and civil rights activist Lena Horne in a biopic. However, she was forced to resign over the Super Bowl scandal. The industry was so hellbent on demonizing Janet that Disney even removed a statue of Mickey Mouse wearing Janet's iconic Rhythm Nation outfit from Disney World in Orlando. Justin's career, however, didn't suffer one bit, and the mainstream media completely minimized his role in the incident, only mentioning it in passing while putting all the focus on Janet. And still, Janet took the high road and never disparaged Justin publicly. However, you could tell how hurt she was when she appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show in 2006 and said she really thought Justin was her friend. All the emphasis was put on me, not on Justin. And, uh... <laughs> Just Justin, we were friends. Certain things you just don't do to friends. The very least Justin could have done was defend Janet or invite her to perform with him. And yet, he kept silent for years, only apologizing in 2021 following social media backlash sparked by the Framing Britney Spears documentary. What makes this worse is that Justin copied so much from Janet's brother, Michael Jackson, and Pharrell confirmed that he originally wrote the songs on Justin's debut album, Justified, for Michael. And yes, pretty much every pop and R&B artist copied Michael in some way, but for Justin to profess his admiration for Michael and then throw his sister under the bus really showed everyone where his priorities lie. 
But Janet and Michael aren't the only black artists that Justin disrespected after claiming they were his idols. Back in 2018, Justin announced his plan to perform at the Super Bowl with a hologram of Prince, despite knowing how Prince felt about holograms. Prince was previously asked in an interview to comment on technology that makes it possible to perform with deceased artists, and if he would ever consider doing something like that. And yet, two years after Prince died, Justin tried to bring out a Prince hologram. Finally, after intense backlash from fans, Justin said he wouldn't be using the hologram after all. However, he still ended up performing with a larger video projection of Prince and sang his song. What's also important to point out is that Prince didn't even like Justin, and they actually had a little beef going on years before. After Justin's single, Sexy Back, was released, Prince poked fun at him at an Emmy's after party by yelling to a crowd, for whoever is claiming that they are bringing Sexy Back, Sexy never left. A few months later, Prince won the Golden Globe for Best Original Song, and Justin was the one presenting the award. However, Prince didn't want to attend, and Justin used the opportunity to mock Prince's height. Um... Well, I guess Prince couldn't be here, so uh, I'd like to accept this award on his behalf, and uh, thank you. After this, a number of black artists expressed their disapproval, pointing out that Justin only uses black culture when it suits him. And Chris Rock probably explained it best. And when they told Justin Timberlake that he was broke, he got real white all of a sudden. He's like, dude, I'm broke. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Mommy, mommy. And just when Justin got so desperate that he got on his knees and ready to lick a man for eight bucks, somebody shows up and says, man, you've been pumped. Then Justin gets all black again. Oh, yeah, you got me, dog. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. Speaking of Justin putting on black scent, there's a hilarious story in Britney's memoir where she narrates how Justin tried to act black in front of singer Genuine. Britney's book is narrated by actress Michelle Williams, and her impression of Justin's fake accent left fans in stitches. His band in sync was what people back then called so pimp. They were white boys, but they loved hip hop. To me, that's what separated them from the Backstreet Boys, who seemed very consciously to position themselves as a white group. In sync hung out with black artists. Sometimes I thought they tried too hard to fit in. One day, Jay and I were in New York, going to parts of town I'd never been to before. Walking our way was a guy with a huge, blinged-out medallion. He was flanked by two giant security guards. Jay got all excited and said so loud, Oh yeah, fo shiz, fo shiz, genuine, what's up, homie? After genuine walked away, Felicia did an impression of Jay. Oh yeah, fo shiz, fo shiz, genuine. Jay wasn't even embarrassed. He just took it and looked at her like, Okay. And how do you feel about Justin shading Britney for bringing up the past? And do you think Justin deserves the culture vulture title? Let us know in the comments.